welcome to the lecture on case studies in modeling of stainless steel making. So, we will be talking today about the uh, second uh, you know uh, type of uh, case studies. Uh, we discussed a few case studies in our uh, previous lecture and uh, these are uh, another uh, uh, few examples of the case studies on modeling of stainless steel making. So, uh, in the last lecture we talked about uh, the uh, inclusion behavior as well as the mixing with the different configuration of uh, Tandis. So, that is what uh, primarily we had you know uh, discussed in that uh, class. Uh, so, uh, further uh, if you uh, try to use uh, the flow modifiers and uh, that too in the different uh, uh, configuration of Tandis, then uh, what is uh, uh, the effect? How you are going to have the analysis of those things. So, that is what uh, we will uh, discuss here. So, this will be use of flow modifier and especially dam in the different configuration of Tandis. So, especially you will have the effect of both the things like dam as well as the uh, uh, with the changing configuration of the Tandis. So, as you usual we have these four uh, configuration of uh, uh, Tandis uh, you know like uh, de delta boat V and uh, T shape and uh, we have the use of the dam here and uh, that dam is uh, kept at 3 positions uh, as the uh, position. So, it will be A 1, A 2 and A 3. So, A 1, 2 and 3 will be uh, related to uh, also the height and then uh, you have also A, B and C positions. So, C will be close to the um, outlet. So, uh, so that is how you see uh, you will have uh, these uh, three positions. So, uh, so now uh, what we will uh, see I think n will be uh, here a 3 is uh, certainly 300 n is more 3 means it is 300 and 1 means it is uh, 100. So, uh, if you look at the uh, boat shape, so uh, for the uh, bear and when you are using the um, uh, you know dam at a position. So, that is closer to the inlet. So, closer to the inlet what you see is you are getting uh, the uh, you know these are the uh, RTD curves. So, uh, this is uh, closer to the inlet this is at intermediate position and this is at uh, uh, the um, uh, you know my position which is close to the outlet. So, that is and then you have 1, 2, 3 is with the change in the height of the dam. So, now if you look at the mean residence time, now mean residence time is shown to be maximum uh, for this case uh, for the green, green is uh, position C and this is your board shape tundis. So, uh, it will be at position C and uh, the dam height is uh, 3. So, if you see this uh, this one, if you can uh, look at the RTD among these RTDs, you see that uh, this is having the, the largest uh, plug volume also and it has minimum of the peak. It is delayed also. So, delaying means uh, and then you have. Uh, so, this uh, graph that is uh, your uh, blue line uh, position C. So, and, and that too uh, so for the boat shape and that too of the uh, uh, height 3. So, this is giving you the best uh, you know uh, value of the mean residence time for the uh, boat shape tundis and uh, uh, if you look at the uh, bear case. So, in the case of bear uh, you see that uh, it is uh, normally uh, you know this is the bear. So, in certain case even it is uh, somewhat worse also if you look at uh, these positions. So, here uh, for the um, position A and uh, for uh, the 2 height. So, if you look at position A and for 2 height it is you can see that this is a green line. So, green line is even starting early and it has a somewhat even higher peak same peak going and then it has it is going. So, that indicates 
that the mean residence time becomes uh, very very small uh, in the case of uh, this bear tendis uh, uh, you know and that too you know, for the second height. So, from the graph you know you can have a comprehensive uh, understanding of uh, what is happening, how the RTD curve is changing and by looking at the uh, variation in the RTD curve you can have uh, a feel that uh, where the mean residence time will be higher or lower. So, this is about the uh, boat shape tundis. Now, if you go to the uh, delta shape tundis, so in the delta shape tundis again you see that similar kind of uh, you know curve uh, uh, you see for the bear tundis and then you have again further the you know uh, the changes in the C curve uh, as you uh, increase the dam height at different positions like A, B or C. Now, in this case also it is similar to the uh, you know boat shape it, it behaves and it here also you have the uh, maximum mean, mean residence time seen for the uh, position C and that too for uh, uh, the largest dam height. So, position C and uh, largest dam height C 3 uh, indicated by the blue color. So, that gives you the uh, you know uh, most delayed appearance of tracer. So, that is maximum value of the uh, plug time and uh, then uh, you have the uh, uh, smaller value of the uh, peak and uh, then it is uh, uh, slowly decreasing. If you look at uh, uh, the uh, red line that is uh, 1. So, for 1 uh, you know for 1 here uh, it is uh, this value. So, certainly it is somewhat better than uh, this one. So, the thing is that uh, um, if you see uh, you know for, uh, for this also here uh, this is somewhat better, but then it is further increasing. So, uh, the thing is that uh, both uh, tundis and the delta shape tundis somehow behave uh, in the similar fashion and the maximum uh, mean residence time is seen at uh, the uh, position uh, C and uh, that is uh, of the dam height of maximum value. So, in this case uh, what you can expect that uh, the, the fluid which is moving so, when it is uh, going uh, towards the uh, you know that you can understand like uh, if you have a tundis and then uh, this is your uh, outlet and this is your inlet. So, the thing is that if you are move if you, if you allow so in normal case it will move early and it will be appearing. Now, if you are having the dam you know here. So, the possible flow will be from here and it will move and then it will go like that not very much helpful. However, if you put the dam somewhat uh, you know if your outlet is here and if you put the dam here. So, in that case uh, you know uh, the, the fluid goes and then it will be moving and then it will go and move like this. So, basically uh, there will be a kind of you know uh, uh, larger you know loop the uh, fluid particles will cover when you are putting a dam just before the outlet that is at position C and also that too especially when you are pu pu putting that of higher dam. So, it will have a larger loop. So, that is uh, the reason uh, because of which you see in these two kind of tundices uh, the maximum value of mean resistance time at uh, position C and of uh, the dam height, dam height being maximum. Then uh, you know if you look at the V shape tundis now here you see in the case of uh, V shape tundis uh, contrary to uh, the uh, boat and uh, uh, delta shape uh, you here you see the maximum value of uh, mean residence time that is for position A means just after the inlet uh, you, know, you know you are having the placement of the uh, dam in that case it is uh, giving the maximum amount of uh, mean residence time that is what is seen that if you put like that you see that it is uh, delayed and as well as the, the height 
is very much uh, smaller. It means the uh, it is completely mixing inside and only smaller value of the tracer is moving towards uh, I mean coming out of the outlet. So, concentration value dimensionless concentration value if you see it is very small as compared to all these cases. If you see in these cases average if you take up to 0.5 times, so it is going about 1.5 or between 1 and 1.5. Here if you look at it will be close to 1 and 1.2. But here if you look at it is even less than 0.5 that indicates that in the case of V shaped tundish what is happening that when the metal is uh, moving down and, and then, then it is uh, you know allowed to go at 45 degree this way it has to be diverted and suddenly if it has uh, the dam. So, maybe that uh, by looking at the uh, we have already seen the velocity vectors. So, basically that uh, pushes the uh, uh, liquid steel to uh, or the you know, tracer which is there. So, it will be going towards the uh, other sides and it will be taking a larger loop and then it will be coming out through the outlet. So, in between it has mixed and then very small amount of concentration of the tracer is observed at the uh, you know outlet when it is just smaller. Whereas, when uh, and maybe that uh, the fluid has a tendency to move towards the upper portion and then it after moving it is coming through the outlet. So, it is taking larger time. Whereas, uh, if you are increasing moving the dam towards the outlet to B position or even to the C position. So, for B position it looks uh, somewhat better uh, you know at all the dam height uh, you know uh, it is better than at C. So, this is uh, because you see that uh, you know the here the height is uh, smaller. So, that is why these values are larger and these heights are somewhat bigger. So, they are uh, giving you the smallest value of the mean resonance time in these cases and uh, uh, maybe it is because of that uh, and the loop of uh, the you know the, the uh, fluid path uh, that is in such a way that uh, you know uh, in, in these cases uh, uh, your uh, the uh, dimensionless concentration height is becoming somewhat higher than uh, you know the other cases other uh, even this case. So, so that is why you see that the mean resonance time will be maximum here then followed by this that is your position B and then finally, at C. So, basically we have seen uh, in the case of uh, you know the uh, boat and V shape. So, uh, what you see that it is uh, coming closer to the uh, 345 or 50 whereas, the maximum value here it is smaller. So, what you see in these two cases it is smaller, but in case of boat and in the V shape it is becoming maximum. So, when your uh, you know uh, the dam is closer to the inlet and also it is maximum among that also when the height is the maximum. Coming to the uh, T shape tundish as you see now in the case of uh, T shape tundish if you see except for this position A where there is improvement over the uh, bare shape and that too with a smaller dam height. Uh, so, that can be seen here that is bare and A 1 is somewhat delayed. So, it is uh, uh, going here, but if except that uh, if you look at all the case in all the cases uh, the uh, the mean resonance time is seen to be smaller and uh, the maximum value is certainly coming closer to 335 or so. Uh, but, uh, but what, what you see here is that even for the uh, you know bare case your value is quite high 320. Whereas, in this case your uh, when you use the dams you get these value of close to 320 or so. So, in this case you are getting for the bear itself 320 and maybe 335 you are going, but for bear tundis if you look at the uh, best one is uh, as far as the mean resonance time is concerned 
the best uh, configuration on this is the T shape where in the bare case itself you got close to 320 or little bit more than that value of uh, the uh, mean resonance time in seconds. And in this case what you see is that you are not going to have much of the advantage by having the placement of dam. So, if you are placing the dam uh, you know and that too you, you see that how uh, adversely it is affecting when you are in increasing the height of the dam especially at position A. So, in that case uh, uh, you know it is completely uh, coming down maybe still it is better than boat and all, uh, but uh, if you look at the boat uh, here you are uh, getting having not even that, but uh, uh, you know uh, this is your. So, uh, this is uh, it is getting smaller. So, that is what uh, we mean to say that for the T shape uh, it is coming uh, down with the help of flow modifiers. So, for the T shape what we um, uh, suggest that uh, it is better not to use the dams uh, or the flow modifiers it works in a bare way better than all the configuration of tundices. Whereas, in case of V shape you should use the um, uh, flow modifiers at the position A and uh, for the uh, uh, you know boat and uh, delta shape you should, should use it at position C closer to the outlet. So, that is what is the, is the outcome of uh, these configuration of tundices and with the use of flow modifiers. If you go for the uh, percentage inclusion removal uh, for these uh, boat and delta shape what you see normally the trend looks uh, somewhat similar except that uh, when you have 10 microns. So, that way for the delta shape it is having maximum removal otherwise uh, they have a similar kind of trend for the boat and uh, the uh, delta shape. And the only one trend which you see normally is that if you have the increased uh, diameter of the particle your removal chances are more because uh, uh, they will be expected to have more buoyancy and more stro uh, strokes velocity. So, that way. Now, the next uh, kind of study which has been done is related to the uh, influence of this tundis shape on the wall shear stress. So, if you have a tundis uh, which is uh, of uh, you know different shapes in that case what will be the effect on the wall shear stress. Now, wall shear stress why it is important uh, because uh, many a times uh, we have the tundis lining and that uh, uh, lining uh, has a particular life and that will be depending upon how much shear stress it is experiencing because of the flow of the uh, metal over that. So, it has been uh, done for these uh, uh, tundices and if you look at the uh, you know uh, this is how typically the velocity vector looks like you see that how the metal is uh, approaching over uh, the uh, you know walls. So, how they have the um, uh, vector uh, you know these vectors so that they are having that kind of so that way they will also go on the walls and uh, then they will have a shear stress because the velocity will be more. So, more velocity gradient with that will lead to uh, the larger value of the uh, shear stresses. So, this is for the uh, boat shape on this and uh, you see that uh, it is moving and then you have a loop here and the metal is going out. And if you calculate these uh, uh, shear stress values, wall shear stress values at the uh, front wall and the uh, boats of the boat shape tundis and also the bottom wall of the boat shape tundis. So, this is your bottom wall and this is your uh, front wall. So, uh, if you see that uh, in the on the front we have seen that it, it is rise raising. So, that way uh, you know it is. Uh, uh, increasing the value. Now, what you see that on the bottom, bottom uh, these values are quite high as compared to the value on the front wall because it is uh, uh, it is getting some time it is going and then it is moving towards the wall. So, that way it is taking that. Now, on the bottom when it is hitting it is splashing and there is a large value of shear stress that is generated. Now, you see the maximum value here 
is close to 6 uh, Pascal whereas, in this case uh, it is about 1 Pascal here. Uh, so, that indicates uh, that uh, the bottom wall is subjected to very high value of wall shear stress and uh, that is the reason many a times we provide the impact pad type of uh, you know uh, arrangement. So, that the, uh, the, 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 the kind of erosion it is likely to generate because of this large velocity you know at the bottom and then splashing on all the sides and having the generated large value of wall shear stress. So, uh, that this uh, you know variation tells that uh, you have the chance maximum chance of erosion uh, of the uh, you know the wall uh, refractory uh, on the bottom side and that is on the you know, boat shaped on this. Come to the uh, you know uh, the uh, T shaped on this and we have seen that how the velocity vector looks like in on the uh, symmetry plane if you see. So, you will have this is the velocity vector and this is the uh, you know uh, uh, velocity vector on the uh, T shaped on this. And uh, here when it was uh, drawn the uh, the you know uh, wall shear stress contours on the uh, you know bottom wall as well as on the front wall. Uh, so, what you see that it is uh, coming little bit higher uh, as compared to the boat shaped and this, this is 2.30 there it was 1.08 or so. Now, that is because the, the out inlet is here and this is closure. So, it will have a larger you know if you had the inlet, inlet been somewhat uh, distant that will certainly be creating less amount of uh, wall shear stress on the front uh, wall. But the most notable feature is the, the wall shear stress value again in this case on the bottom wall and on the bottom wall what you see is that this is your maximum value of the wall shear stress which is close to 6.7. So, again uh, in this uh, case too uh, you are likely to have the uh, very large value of the uh, you know uh, uh, wall shear stress and also more chances of the erosion from the uh, bottom wall. Coming to the um, uh, this is the velocity vector for the T shaped and this uh, and uh, this is uh, again uh, this is for the uh, V shaped and this and for V shaped and this as you see we have got the V shaped and this is uh, this is the back wall and then you have the front wall and this is the bottom. So, on the bottom it is, is somewhat uh, smaller than other two kind, kind of tendencies and on the back walls it has somewhat of the similar order as you see uh, in the case of uh, the uh, boat shaped tendencies or delta shaped tendencies. So, it is uh, coming closer to that uh, order and uh, this value is also somewhat coming uh, of the similar order but somewhat less in the case of V shaped on this. So, that is what we see that normally you can predict uh, depending upon that you can have the prediction of the landing lap and even in those places you can have an additional you know uh, refractory uh, lining. So, that your lining life becomes more uh, in the tundis uh, than in the, in the usual case. So, that has been even uh, you know studied uh, 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 with the help of uh, uh, the uh, these uh, graphs and uh, you see that uh, you have the uh, maximum uh, wall shear stress. So, that is uh, uh, in the, the T shaped and this that is what you see in these cases on the front wall. So, here also uh, T shaped and this uh, it will be seen somewhat uh, you know away. So, uh, maximum is in T shape. And if you look at the uh, bottom, you see that it is quite high uh, in the case of T shaped and this as compared to other cases. So, uh, with the length you can have uh, that uh, measured that how your uh, you know uh, wall shear stress value varying. So, by that uh, you can have one you know understanding and you can suggest in the plant. 
Uh, next part is about uh, one of the work which um, uh, the uh, group has done is related to the influence of nozzle blockage on flow behavior. And uh, what happens that many a times you have the uh, situation that uh, you have to uh, open, uh, close certain uh, caster in the uh, continuous casting unit. So, one of the uh, because of clogging or because of maybe uh, you know other reasons like uh, productivity you, has to, you have to uh, uh, slow down the process or so. So, in that case uh, it was uh, it has seen that how the uh, you know Tundis behaves in that case and how the uh, RTD behavior will look like and how the Tundis will perform. So, that is uh, because of that transitory opening uh, case which is a curved type of uh, you know uh, Tundis which is a uh, typical industrial uh, size tundis and uh, you know in that uh, uh, you know this is how some experimental work was done for the validation work. So, that was seen that validation is somewhat better in these two tundises outlets. So, this is one part of the numerical modeling when you do. So, you do the validation and you can have also the feel when you do the uh, physical modeling. So, how the die is uh, uh, you know dispersing on both the sides. So, that is seen you know uh, in, in this case. So, that is uh, again one of the study. However, the what we mean to say that uh, uh, what we did is uh, there are few cases like one is when all the outlets are open. In the case 2 you open outlet 1 which is the farthest one. In case 3 I mean, means you close it in, in case 3 you are closing outlet 3 that is middle outlet, middle outlet you are closing and in this you are near outlet you are closing and 4, 5, 6 is you are open, uh, closing 2 outlets uh, 1 and 4 similarly uh, you have uh, 1 and 5 and uh, you know 3 and uh, uh, 4 like that. So, you have this uh, you can have uh, different cases and uh, you can do the RTD analysis. So, this is RTD when you are having uh, the outlet uh, you know, 1, 2 and 3 you can see one is the uh, the far outlet. So, black one and then you will have uh, so and then you will have uh, the 3 and 4 will be uh, you know uh, green and blue. So, they will be because this is symmetry. So, green and blue uh, you know will be together and you see that this is the bigger uh, height. Similarly, uh, 2 and uh, 5 will be same. So, that is 2 and 5 will be this one and 1 and 6 will be by this one. So, that way uh, you have uh, the uh, 3 uh, these outlets uh, on these outlets if you draw the RTD uh, it behaves like this. Now, if you close outlet 1. Uh, so, in that case you see that uh, the outlet 4 which is uh, uh, near the inlet. Now, in that case we see that there is the increase in the peak uh, you know at uh, the value more than 3. So, in earlier case it was uh, less than 3 it was quite to 2.75 or so. So, it is uh, decreasing and otherwise it looks somewhat similar, but uh, then that is uh, affecting it means it is affecting the fluid uh, flow pattern. Now, in this case you are uh, keeping outlet 2 closed, 3 closed. So, this way you know if you change then your uh, overall uh, ratio of uh, the uh, mean resistance time you can have the calculation and what you see that overall V m by V d. Uh, is maximum when you are closing 4 outlet 4. So, outlet 4 when you are closing that is close to outlet 3 basically case 4 that is outlet 3 is closed. This is the case which is giving you the best result because this is a near outlet and that uh, leads to the best result. So, because that uh, you know that avoids short circuiting and that is how your V m by V d is maximum. So, that is uh, you can have the velocity vector you can see this is all the outlets are open here you have closing this then you have this close this and then you have closed this. So, your velocity vector you can have the analysis and uh, you can see that how uh, you know changes are there in the uh, uh, you know you see that this is a symmetrical uh, case you have here and here 
here and here you have all that uh, symmetrically you have a closed loops. Now, in this case after why you when you close it on this side you see a loop whereas on this side you do not see. So, here similarly you see do the closing here you see a loop here. So, like that and a smaller one in the larger region. So, this is like uh, you know the change in the velocity vector which you observe uh, in, in such cases. So, for 5 to 7 also when two outlets you are closing. So, uh, you know in that case uh, how your uh, um, velocity vectors RTD is changing and how their effect will be there on the uh, overall V m by V d you see maximum value here in the case of 7. So, this is one of the you know case way you can have certain studies on these uh, uh, cases this is about the analysis of velocity vectors that is changing. Now, in this case you are changing these two outlets and this, this and this outlet and then this and this outlet like that. Now, uh, there is another uh, work which is very much go, uh, going in the tundras is in of importance is the interface level fluctuation and that is done using the VOF model and uh, that is also one of the work which has been done by uh, our group. So, it is about uh, you know the prediction of this uh, level. So, as you see that uh, you know this is was done for the grade change analysis and as you see that level is decreasing and uh, you can see that here also the level is being decreased and you can have you are having an interface. Now, uh, that is uh, uh, with a different scheme you know uh, you are predicting that uh, interface and for that also you have the uh, different uh, kinds of scheme which uh, uh, are available like uh, you have the uh, you know HRIC scheme high resolution. Uh, you know image capturing scheme and you have the uh, geo reconstruct schemes there are many uh, schemes available in the softwares like fluent also there. So, uh, you know and, and other softwares like uh, you have the phonics and all other softwares are there. So, they will have the different uh, you know schemes. So, you can have the prediction and what you see that you see the sharp interface in these case. So, that is what is observed you know. So, these are you know some of the um, examples of the uh, you know uh, the work case studies which are done on the tundras and you can have the these modeling work you can practice and have more and more confidence and uh, you know work for uh, the industry or the um, or, or, or for your uh, uh, you know own research. So, thank you for uh, the uh, patient listening to the lectures and I hope that uh, you are uh, going to get benefit uh, and you are having satisfaction of uh, the, the lectures which uh, has been uh, told, but what I feel that uh, you should have a practice of on uh, the, the codes and uh, either developed by you or on the uh, you know uh, software codes and you should try to solve these problems you know uh, uh, live you should solve the problems and, and uh, try to get the uh, solution. So, that will uh, increase your uh, confidence and you will uh, be benefiting most out of these courses. So, thanks once again thank you very much. Music